Hello everyone, this is Mark Guillermo of 413 Media Group coming in hot with a new 413 review where we'll be taking a look at a CCTV footage of a man wielding a bolo versus two policemen with batons. Once in a while I ask myself, where can I learn more about handling weapons such as batons and bolos? Well, with the miracle of CCTV, technology, now we can see some real life encounters of people handling weapons. Let's take a look. Boom. Now I already know what many of you are gonna say. I would have shot him. So why didn't they shoot him? If this was in the US, he would have been shot so many times already. Thank you very much for your awesome opinions. Please write them down in the comment section below. But the purpose of this video is actually to give a brief analysis of how both sides use their weapons. First off, let's talk about what the two policemen were using. They're the traditional batons or nightsticks used by anti-riot police as well. They're modeled after the Okinawan tonfa, which has a short handle that is perpendicular to the stick. One of the biggest advantage of having this compared to the typical straight baton would be that they can hold it on that perpendicular handle and they can use it for a much better defensive maneuver, just like a typical block. It also makes it harder to get disarmed because of the ergonomics of that perpendicular handle. As for the guy wielding the short sword or the bolo, it's a bolo. That's pretty much all I can comment on it. It looks kind of sharp. Also, what happened to his left arm? Why is it wrapped like that? Did he like accidentally like cut himself when he was swinging it? Now, what I found really interesting with how the policemen used their batons were that instead of using it in the more typical defensive manner, they were actually using it in a more offensive way. How is that? They were holding it more at the tip. Obviously, this would maximize range much more than holding it in the traditional tonfa-like manner. But not only that, another interesting thing is if you look at how both policemen were holding their batons, they were flipped. This policeman was holding it at the tip closer to the perpendicular handle, while this one was holding it on the other end, having the perpendicular handle closer to the opponent. So I thought a little bit about the logic of why you might use it in that manner with the perpendicular handle away from you. And I thought of a couple of things. One is that it would add more mass at the tip. Think of a baseball bat you can hit with more momentum and therefore more force, more damage to the opponent. Second thing is that that perpendicular handle actually acts like a hook. So you might be able to disarm the opponent. However, this particular policeman didn't look like he knew how to disarm by holding the baton in this way. But nevertheless, they both successfully detained the assailant. So good job to them. Justice wins. Now let's talk about this assailant with the bolo. Look at how he swings the bolo. Very flowery. Obviously making the two policemen very wary. But his failure here is that he was focusing too much on only one opponent. And just like how my instructor always told me, you can only fight one person at a time. And that was his downfall here, because as he was distracted trying to scare one policeman, he was tackled by the other. But could he have had a chance of winning if we think about what I just said about you can only fight one person at a time? I think there was a chance. If he had gone around, to the other side of the, one of the policemen and as he fought this policeman used him as a shield and he took them down one at a time then perhaps he may have won or survived a little longer. Thankfully he was not skilled or smart enough to know that. 
So what did you guys think of this encounter? I know that's kind of a general question, but just let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to read your responses. Once again, thank you guys for watching this video all the way through. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have the time and click that notification bell below because you're already here anyways. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Before you guys go, I want to remind you again of the Wild Wild Western, the Global Stick and Blade Alliance Western Regional Championships. It's going to be held in San Bernardino, California on July 27, 2019. It's $90 for unlimited divisions and you get a free limited edition hoodie. For more information, go to www.413group.net forward slash western. Hope to see you guys there.